Hi all, it's Rio CloudSync. In today's session, we will be accessing the Microsoft Entra ID console and looking at administrative units. Let's first define and understand what administrative units are. Well, from a high level perspective, they're a container for other Azure Active Directory resources, now known as Entra ID resources. Admin units, in essence, allow you as administrator to restrict permissions for roles within your organization. Please bear in mind administrative units can only contain the likes of users, groups and devices. Off the back of that, there may be some dependencies, which we will talk through. So let's access administrative units, show you where it resides, how we administer admin units, and how they benefit us as an administrator. So if we access entra.microsoft.com by typing it into our search bar, it would it will take you to the Microsoft Entra admin console. With that, you'll be presented a high level dashboard. If we navigate to the left hand pane, we can see identity. This is where we'll administer the likes of users, groups and devices, so forth. And we scroll down to roles and admins. We want to select admin units in this case. And it will take you to the pane where we will create, monitor our administrative units, provide a centralized container for users who we want admins to be able to administer. It may be you want to allow a help desk admin to only administer certain members within an organization. For example, if we have a school, we may have a uh, sev several subsidiaries within this school. Uh, with that, we may have um, different IT admins associated with these separate subsidiaries. We may only want the IT admin associated with the one subsidiary to be able to manage the users which reside within that within that um, container. And this is how we can achieve the likes of that. So if we select add on administrative units, we can type in a name. I'm just going to call this admin unit. We can provide a description, not mandatory. And then we do have an option to restrict management administrative units. This basically stops inheritance from uh, the likes of global admins, um, security admins within the organization, which already reside. So if you hover over the little information policy tip, once again, it will just reiterate that inheritance will be disabled, which is fine we're fully isolating an administrative role to be able to manage a set of users within the group. So if we select next assign roles, this will be the admin associated with, with this administrative unit and then, and then we'll add the users we can manage. Once again, you won't see a full list of roles and admins within the admin roles. There are limitations to the roles you can use. However, Microsoft at least give you the, the capability to be able to define um, a, sh a short list of administrative roles. In this instance, we'll go with our example. We'll select user administrator, which can manage all aspects of users and groups. And we'll assign this to myself, for example. Add, we'll press next, review and create, and then we'll select create. This may take a few seconds. There we go, all done. So if I give it a, qu a quick refresh, like I said, it will take a few seconds just to propagate. Give it a refresh at the top. There we go. It's appeared. So we've got an admin unit called admin unit. I've selected no to restricted management as I don't want any inheritance um, to the uh, container itself. And membership type is assigned. Um, so just to note, you can uh, use the likes of dynamic membership rules uh, to add either users or devices to the um, admin unit itself. Um, so, so it behaves and acts the same way as if you were creating a Microsoft 365 security group. So if I select admin unit, I can now administer the unit itself. So at this point in time, I've got no members within the admin unit. 
So I've assigned myself as an administrator for this admin unit, but I can't administer anyone because there's no members in the group. So what we'll do, we'll add a member and we'll select service user A, for example. Member A is now uh, added to the group. We'll give it a refresh once again. It does take a few seconds. While we're waiting for that to load, if we scroll to roles and administrators and you click on user administrator, you can see I assign myself to the user administrator role and the scope of the role is administrative unit only. So outside of this unit, I can't manage users. I, it's isolated to this group and this group only. If I go back one, I can see I've got an option to add groups and devices. Bear in mind when you do add the likes of a group to an administrative unit, you can only administer the group and the group only. You can't administer the users which reside within the group. If we go back to users now, that should have given it, given it enough time to propagate. You can now see we've got service user A within the uh, administrative unit itself. So with that, if I was to sign in to uh, my account, which I already am, I would be able to administer everything on service user A and service user A only, but nothing outside of service user A. It's, it's quite a bad example because I'm already a global administrator, uh, but indicatively, if I wasn't a global administrator and I only had user admin, I would be able to only administer service user A's uh, properties. One last thing to note is um, administrative units um, in terms of licensing requires a Microsoft Entra ID P1 license. Other than that, um, you should be good to go. If you do have any questions, this was just a short um, video. Uh, please do let me know. Thank you.